Hi there, welcome to Build Picker. I'm John. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the i5, particularly the i5 12th generation. Intel's older lake has got a strong suite of CPUs pretty much across the board, but there are some nuances with the i5 that mean that you'll want to understand exactly what you're buying, what its strengths are, and perhaps if there's a better option in the range that suits your needs better. In this video, I'm going to explain which features and metrics you want to look out for when you're choosing between these CPUs, which matter to you and which are of no consequence. And there are some pitfalls as well, so we'll go into those. We'll also talk about some alternatives from AMD you might want to consider. We use the information that we aggregate to inform the builds we've put over on buildpicker.com. It's a fantastic resource that gives you complete PC builds for any usage case and budget. And I really hope you'll find some useful inspiration or perhaps a complete click and ready to go build. So let's get stuck in and explain the Intel i5 range. I'll start by explaining a few of the points you'll want to consider as we go through this so that we're all on the same footing in terms of information. Then the rest of what we say will make sense as we pick between the CPUs. I'll also just make the point at this stage that you should really only consider the 12th generation of the Intel CPUs at this point. They took a big step forward from the 10th and 11th generations, and realistically, there's a CPU here for every price point. If you find that some of the i5s are a little bit too expensive, you should consider the i3-12100, which is a fantastic and powerful CPU for gaming and general use, and it outperforms most of the previous ranges at the same price point. Likewise, if you're looking at an i7 10th or 11th generation and thinking it might outperform the i5 12400, it actually won't. They have slower single core speed, and in gaming and general use, you're going to benefit from the 12th generation and the improvements that brought more than you'll benefit from the additional two cores on the older i7. That said, let's get stuck into the current generation. There's no two ways about it. The old late generation of i5 CPUs is weird. There's a bigger range here than there's been in any previous i5 generation. First up, there's a 200 MHz step in speed between the models. The i5-12600 is therefore around 10% faster than the i5-12400. It has a 4.8 versus a 4.4 GHz peak boost clock. The K model, the 12600K and the 12600KF, gain four efficiency cores over the other models, and they have more level three cache. They're a very different CPU to the non-K models, and could be thought of as a cut down i7 rather than a pumped up i5. For this reason, it's perfectly justifiable this generation to pair the i5-12600K with a B660 motherboard so that you gain those additional four E cores for multi-core power in the CPU. Then we come to the letters after the CPU name, and these are important because they indicate features or a lack of graphics. If you see an F after the CPU, and this goes across the board for Intel, it means there are no integrated graphics and no graphics output without a dedicated GPU. If you build a PC with an F CPU and no GPU, it won't work. The K after the CPU name means that the CPU has an unlocked multiplier, and this means it can be overclocked on a Z690 motherboard. They also ship without a CPU cooler, so that needs to be a separate purchase. There are also some other letters that aren't really relevant for this discussion because they tend to apply to components that we're not really concerned with. T means that the CPU is a low power version. You often see these in NUX and office builds, and it's not something that we'll cover here because they're not generally available to the consumer. And a U after a CPU designation means that it's a laptop or mobile variant. And again, these aren't generally available to the consumer and they're not something we'll consider further in this video. So when you're looking at the CPUs, make sure you know what you're getting. Some cases you won't care whether it's an F or not, or you'll only be looking for the Ks, but just make sure that you know what those letters mean. I'll also take this moment to provide a quick note on overclocking. There's been a bit of a sea change in terms of overclocking with this generation of CPUs from Intel, and some motherboards now allow overclocking of non-K CPUs via the B-clock adjustment. B-clock is the basic tick rate of the entire system. It's normally 100 MHz, and it's adjustable to around 103 MHz and limited by the CPU's own internal clock generator. That's on any motherboard, pretty much. However, some B660 motherboards, and Z690 as well, ship with an external clock generator, and this overrides the internal clock generator of the CPU and allows B-clock adjustment up to 150 MHz and beyond. Nonetheless, a non-K CPU still has locked multipliers. This means that the only mechanism of B-clock overclocking with a non-K CPU is to reduce various multipliers and other system speeds, and then overclock the entire system by raising B-clock across the board. If you want to overclock, get a Z690 and a K CPU. You enjoy much greater flexibility in setting voltages and multiplier adjustment across the board and across a much wider range of settings. If you want to set overclocking world records or enjoy the novelty of a new form of overclocking, you can try B-clock overclocking. 
However, it's not a panacea and it's not a guaranteed way of getting further performance out of a non-K CPU without significant tweaking and tuning. So I'd suggest that you ignore it unless it's just something you want to do for a hobby. Moving on then, and tied in with that F designation for CPUs, let's talk quickly about integrated graphics. There are differences in the capability of the integrated graphics on these CPUs. Again, the F means that there's no integrated GPU, and you must buy a separate graphics card or your PC won't work. Then there's variants that have either the UHD 730 or the UHD 770 Intel integrated graphics. These come respectively with either 24 or 32 execution units, and the UHD 770 runs slightly faster as well. Whilst there is a substantial difference in graphics performance for these iGPUs, neither is really suitable for gaming. You can't use them in the same way as, for example, the 5600G from AMD, which does allow you to play basic 3D titles fairly well. The only way you're going to game on these systems without a GPU is if you use a service like GeForce Now, which actually can work surprisingly well, but it's probably not a solution you're looking for if you are buying these CPUs to game on them. The Intel integrated GPU also includes an integrated quick sync encoder, so don't use an FCPU for video editing or visual productivity. If you're using visual manipulation programs, Adobe Suite products in particular, you're going to want to make sure that you buy a non-FCPU in order to gain that extra acceleration in certain codecs and processes. It's really valuable, particularly for video editing, so make sure you get the right CPU if that's what you're buying for. And let's talk briefly about clock speeds. They're confusing. Intel have a habit of listing base clock speeds. They're misleading because the CPU basically never runs at those speeds. And while you'll see things like a, a CPU showing it's 1.9 gigahertz base clock speed and it looks really bad, it doesn't actually tell you anything about how the CPU is going to perform in your system. The quoted boost clock speeds that they show you are the single core maximum boost. All core or multi-core workloads will see lower boost clocks than this as the CPU throttles to allow power and thermal levels to be maintained. This is completely normal and almost nothing runs in a pure single core mode, not even games. Therefore, don't be surprised if you buy a CPU that quotes 4.4 GHz and you see it running at 4.2 GHz when you've got it fully loaded up. The boost clock speed does directly relate to performance and therefore lifting that boost clock either via overclocking or by buying a CPU that allows a higher boost overclock does directly translate to a slightly higher performance. And finally, in terms of the information you need to know as you make these decisions, the quoted power that Intel show is lies. Intel stated TDP is artificial and it's not representative. They quote a nominal 65 watt power draw for their non-K i5 CPUs. Actual power under full load is around 110 watts for an i5-12400 to 12600. And an i5-12600K or KF will draw around 150 watts under full load. The motherboard and how it deploys and enforces power limits dictate your multi-core performance. If you don't do extended all-core workloads like video rendering or other 3D rendering on the CPU, this doesn't matter as much. Gaming and general use is fine and the 65 watt power limit really won't impact you. However, if you are doing those kind of workloads, you need to ensure your motherboard allows it and ensure you have adequate cooling. The stock cooler only meets basic needs and a 65 watt limit and a four heat pipe tower cooler is a sensible upgrade. I'd encourage you to watch two of our videos to learn more about this. One of them is the best cooler for the Intel i5 where we've tested them and the other is the best B660 motherboards in which we go into quite a lot of depth about exactly how the power limits are employed by motherboards and how they can impact the performance of your PC. If you're finding this video useful, please do just take a moment to click like and subscribe. It really helps us get this information to you about the best possible components to put into your next PC. So with those key points noted, let's get into it and actually talk about each of those CPUs in turn. First up, there's the i5-12400F. This is the value champion of the i5 range, retailing at around $170. Note that it's an F, so it has no graphics output. You must buy a GPU to get a working PC with this CPU. It's otherwise identical to the i5-12400, and in performance and features, it's incredibly close to the Ryzen 5 CPUs, the 5600 and the 5600X. Do watch pricing on it. Sometimes, because of demand and reduced supply, it will actually be more expensive than the 12400, or even the higher models like the 12500. So if they drop below this in price, buy one of those instead. You get the same performance, but the added benefit of the iGPU. 
It does come with a basic cooler, and if you're on a really tight budget, you can make use of that to get the best value out of this CPU. Do consider the value alternative of a Ryzen 5600 or 5600X and a B550 motherboard. One of the problems with the i5s is just that the B660 motherboard range isn't that forgiving, and it's sometimes a little bit expensive to get a motherboard with decent features. So cross shop between the two and see which works out cheaper for you. Moving on then, the i5-12400 is the same CPU with that added UHD 730 onboard graphics. This makes it good for a budget productivity CPU if you want to use it in an office PC or for video processing with a GPU doing most of the heavy lifting, but taking advantage of Intel QuickSync. It's the next best value champion out of the i5 range. And do watch pricing. It is worthwhile having the iGPU. It can be helpful for troubleshooting. It can be helpful if you want to move this CPU to another system in a few years time and don't want to dedicate a graphics card to it. Overall, it's just a really nice feature to have. It also gains you those outputs on your motherboard. So if running multiple screens, it can give you a little bit more flexibility to do that. Do be aware that it's sometimes more expensive again than the i5-12500 or 12600. So get those if they're cheaper. There's no difference apart from their performance. And again, it comes with a basic cooler. Overall then, the i5-12400 is a good buy. Consider those alternatives from AMD and do make sure that the higher up products aren't cheaper at the time of your purchase. Other than that, it gets a hearty recommendation for gaming and general use. We'll talk about the i5-12500 and 12600 together because they're very similar in nature. All they do is lift that boost clock. You can see the i5-12500 has a 4.6 gigahertz peak boost clock and the i5-12600 has a 4.8 gigahertz boost clock. This means that they will perform higher. This is because the CPUs are binned higher and are allowed then to achieve a higher clock speed. They also have basic graphics output and can build a standalone PC. They've got that UHD 770 graphics on board. And whilst you can try basic 3D gaming on it, I wouldn't really recommend it. They are worth 10 or $20 more perhaps than the i5-12400. And particularly if you're doing things like looking at the optimal RAM to increase the performance of your CPU, bear in mind that the $20 you're spending on higher quality RAM could actually be spent on one of these CPUs and the higher boost clocks will guarantee higher performance whenever the CPU is under full load. And again, the pricing on these can be a little bit wacky. They can sometimes be cheaper than the i5-12400. And bearing in mind, they offer you everything that CPU does and more. If they're cheaper, you should just buy one of these instead. And again, they also ship with a basic cooler, but you will want to replace this with a four heat pipe tower cooler at a minimum. It's another 20 or $30 just to ensure proper operation of the CPU and no thermal throttling. Both of these CPUs then get a warm recommendation from us. It just depends on the price. If they're a few dollars more than the i5-12400, then obviously you can buy the higher performance one. The i5-12500 does tend to be that little bit more expensive and not really worth the additional. It's only that enhanced boost clock that you're getting. Moving on then, let's take a look at the oddball in the family, the i5-12600K and the i5-12600KF. These CPUs are significantly higher performance, particularly in multi-core workloads, thanks to a larger level 3 cache and that higher clock speed. They can also be overclocked on Z690 motherboards. They include four additional efficiency cores, meaning that the non-F version of this CPU is a productivity halfway house between an i5 non-K and an i7-12700K. For that reason, if you're looking at an i5-12600K, plus a Z690 motherboard for gaming or productivity work, you should consider also the i7-12700. This is a CPU which has eight performance cores versus the i5-6 performance cores. It also includes the four E cores. This makes it an absolute monster, both for gaming and productivity. And it's also got 25 megabytes of level three cache, which does assist gaming performance as well. It has the same peak boost clock. Overall, the i7-12700 can be a better option than the i5-12600K in particular. The i5-12600KF is Intel's highest performing i5 gaming CPU this generation, and at around $250 to $260, you won't get more bang for your buck in terms of a fast gaming CPU. Note that these CPUs ship with no cooler included, and you will need to budget for an additional cooler. They won't work without one. Overall then, that concludes our roundup of the i5 CPUs. As you can see, they all get our recommendation just depending on your budget and needs. There's probably a CPU in there that pretty much fits what you want. You won't go far wrong with any of them. Do just bear those points I've mentioned in this video in mind. 
in particular whether an F variant CPU is suitable for you or not, and whether you need the i5-12600K and those additional e-cores, or whether you'd be better off stepping up to the i7 and getting a more powerful all-round CPU. So that completes our roundup of the i5 range. I really hope you found it useful and it's explained some of the differences that you may not have been aware of, and it's empowered you to actually make the right choice about CPUs. Don't be scared to look up or down the product stack. You may actually save money and get a better product just for the sake of checking another CPU. Likewise, if you're up at the top end of this budget, you're buying an i5-12600K and you're thinking about pairing it with the Z690 motherboard, do consider the options around an i7-12700 and a B660 motherboard. You lose the overclocking ability, but you gain a much more powerful base CPU. And if you're looking at this for gaming or productivity, then you'll actually get a better computer, possibly for less money, and it's worth considering that as an option. Don't feel bad switching between the Ryzen 5 5600 and 5600X and the Intel i5-12400 CPUs. Their performance is almost identical in general use and in gaming, so you can happily choose whichever is cheaper if budget is your main concern. You'll get a great PC either way. The other issue to consider is motherboards. These i5 CPUs, the non-K variants, pair very well with B660 motherboards, but you'll want to check out our video rounding up the B660 motherboard range to choose one that's appropriate for you. Do beware, some of the cheaper or worse motherboards do actually impact the performance of even i5 CPUs, so you need to choose wisely there. And equally, the Z690 motherboard range really is quite expensive, $200 and up, and $250 really for a reasonable Z690 motherboard. Again, we've got a video on that you can check out, but do just consider the value proposition of the system as a whole. If you're creeping in budget with an i5-12600K CPU and a Z690 motherboard, there are probably more cost-effective options either by going to an i7 non-K CPU, or perhaps looking at the AMD range and seeing a 5800X might suit you better for pure gaming and uh, can actually bring down the cost of your build a little bit. Please do also check out buildpicker.com. This is the kind of information we put together to make sure that the builds on there are as good as they can be. As an example, we substitute in all variants of the i5 so that if, for whatever reason, the i5-12500 drops below the price of the i5-12400, that will be automatically inserted into the build and anyone buying it will get a better PC for their money. We've also updated the filters, meaning it's much quicker for you now to find the PC that's ideal for you. So do check out buildpicker.com.